Okay, Darren here. We are going to go on location today. I got a call. A, a gentleman has a rather nice boat. Excuse me. He tried to remove a decal off his boat and he jacked it up. Most people will oversimplify the decal removal process, whether it's debadging a car or removing a decal from an RV or a boat. So I'm going to show you what is very common in my world. So this video is really geared towards the not so much the do-it-yourselfer, but the professional detailer that's looking to enhance his services, learn some additional techniques. Um, uh, so if you're beginning to get into the detailing and you want to broaden your services, this will be geared towards you. I'm gonna offer some tips of wet sanding on a boat and gel coat specifically. I'm going to address issues of how to talk to a customer at the very end of the video, if you stick around that long and if I'm engaging enough for you, I will add some additional tips uh, about a common theme of mine, which is communication is king. And it's just, I'm serious, as I'm working out there, this, this talk track just circulates through my mind of being in the business and trying to put myself in your guys' shoes that are starting out in the business and I just know that I did not have access to any of this when I started out. I mean, the internet didn't, didn't even exist when I first started out. So in many ways, you guys are so lucky. And I don't mean just from my information, because there's plenty out there. So that's where you're going to have to pick and choose. If I have something to teach you, then great. If someone else has something to teach you, more power to them. So that's where you'll have to pick and choose. What I'm trying to do is to really simplify a lot of the processes for you, teach you ways to become more profitable, and try to get you over that learning curve quicker rather than later. So that's really my main objectives with these videos is to help you with those specific areas. Now, uh, what is very commonly asked is, you know, startup. I mean, there's so much information to cover and I just don't have time. I mean, I'm literally buried with work and that's the good news for me. And that's where the internet comes in. And I'm telling you, it's like that website of mine, and that's completely independent, just so you know, of this YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is totally different. I have a website. I actually have two websites, okay? But my main website that actually gets me business as far as detailing business, that is a lifesaver. Uh, fortunately, I had the the foresight to see what was coming down the road, that the economy was gonna crash, if I don't learn to become more relevant with uh, modern day technology, like the internet, I was going to die on the vine. I was going to wither away and die. And I've seen many detailers in my area specifically that have done that. So now there's this big gap. You've got these low budget immigrant workers that are unskilled, untrained, they, uh, they, they're, they're what I call the pet boy de um, detailers. Um, and I think pet boys is a nationwide chain. You can buy all kinds of car care products there. So they go to pet boys, they pick and choose what they think will work. They start by washing because most anyone can wash a car. They offer a cheap price. So that's really what has saturated the market here in Southern California. And they've pushed out so many other detailers. So I'm a specialty detailer, which means that I'm geared for the guy that is shopping value. He wants someone that brings the full package in how I present myself, how I can communicate, my skill level, uh, and I'm a voice of reason. And that's something else I will address at the end of this video if you stay tuned. So let's go on, on location. I'm gonna cover a lot of stuff. Hopefully you will uh, be able to learn uh, not only techniques, but communication skills, uh, becoming a voice of reason. So there's a lot to learn. I'm just trying to help you over that learning curve. And let's go with that. Okay, Darren here. What we have today is a little uh, decal removal repair. I get a lot of phone calls, um, boats, cars, RVs, you name it, decals, emblems come on many things. So I'm going to take you in for a little job. I'm on location, of course, as always. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to repair someone's mistake. Um, they tried to take the decal off themselves. 
they succeeded, but in the process they put some scratches in. So I'm gonna offer a couple little tips for you professionals, uh, do-it-yourselfers, whomever. Anyhow, so let's take a little uh, quick uh, tour and I can show you what I'm dealing with. So what we have is a uh, rather nice, I think it's like a 23 foot semi deck boat for lack of a better word. And we have some decals and I've already begun the process. And what we have is we have some gray decals here and I'll quickly come around to the other side and show you what the original, here's what the original side looked like. We've got the red, we've got the gray. He wanted the red off. I'm not sure exactly why. We talked at length about it, but for some reason he wanted the red off. So he took the red off the other side. And of course, if you've seen my other videos, you know that when it comes to debadging a car, emblem removal, there's always multiple stages to it. And most people oversimplify it. And they think, oh, I just gotta do is pick up an edge or grab the famous heat gun because that always works. Yes, sarcasm there, folks. Yes, the heat gun is a useful tool, but it's not the, the magic silver bullet that's gonna just take care of everything. So there's always layers. There's always different stages to it. So this situation, he removed the top layer, peeled off the vinyl decal, but then there was adhesive underneath. That's where he pulled out some, I don't remember, some kind of, uh, what was it he showed me? Well, he did use the goof off right here. He did use that. Um, he's got a whole plethora. Oh, here we go. 3M Marine Rubbing Compound. Yes, will remove for heavily oxidized or scratch finishes. The problem is if you do it by hand or you do it improperly, you actually mar up and scratch the surface in the process itself. So if you look down the side, and I'm hoping the light picks it up, you can see all the scratches that were put in. Um, you can see even the uh, shadow where the original decal was right there. I have no idea what's going to pick up, so I'm just trying to get different angles to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my DA polisher right here, Griot's Garage. I've got my 2000 grit and my 3000 grit sanding disc. I'm going to use that to basically scratch my way to perfection. I'm going to remove all the deep scratches and create a uniformed scratch pattern. I'm going to start out the at the more aggressive, which is 2000 grit. I will graduate to the 3000, then I will use my high speed DeWalt polisher, which is here with a wool pad, and then I will just graduate. And and like I said, removing scratches or polishing paint you literally scratch your way to perfection. You start out with aggressive scratches and you move to finer and finer and finer to the point where the surface looks flawless to the unaided eye. Also what I've going on here is two types of tape. Because I want to protect this original decal, I have this aggressive, for lack of a better word, it's Super Duty Tape. It's made by Scotch, which I believe is a 3M product. And because I'm gonna sand this, and I'm gonna be working with the buffer as it's sanding, the DA, I wanna make sure this tape stays in place. Then I have my blue painter's tape, just as kind of a buffer zone. So I can overlap with the sanding disc as I'm sanding, because I wanna make sure I've got, um, you know, complete removal of the scratches. So the blue tape will not be able to endure water very well and it will probably start peeling off. This green tape is uh, more adhesive. So this is just a little strategy that I use. What I also do is beforehand is because you will have to blend. You'll have to sand all the scratches out. So I put up these little markers on both ends. This is how much sanding I have to do. So I know that if I sand up to this, then I'm good. 
all the scratches will have been sanded away and I can double check obviously but these are my, my, my marker pieces after I've sanded the scratches I'm gonna remove these I'm gonna push them out about two inches and that will be my new buffer marks so that I know that I need to polish the sanding marks that have come up to this point I need to polish past that point to basically blend it from here down to here which then blends into the rest of the boat so let's move forward okay um, every situation in detailing has trade-offs just like life so the trade-off here is do I want to take time and pull the boat out where I have more space to work well the answer is no because I'm not doing that much work so the trade-off is I've got to kind of work in confined quarters the lighting is fine because uh, I have lighting that comes in from the outside so when you look down the side of the boat I can uh, it's very revealing so that's not an issue um, but anyhow so trade-offs so this is where I get frustrated because people will take things out of context and say oh wow I would never color sand without a uh, running stream of water or blah 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 well that's where experience comes in and I can adjust accordingly and appropriately so I've got my spray bottle and I'm and I've cleaned my pad I always double check my pad to make sure it's clean I hose it off I rinse it off and I do a visual inspection I feel it so I really make sure it's clean that there's no loose little foreign material that has fallen upon it accidentally that I'm not now going to abrade or scratch the paint with and then I just use my sprayer to keep the area wet and you can see the black gel coat material that is falling off the paint because it's not paint it's gel coat it's molded in that same color So it's pretty straightforward. Um, and once again, this is based on experience. It's uh, a combination of experience and just responding to the information. So the information in this case is how deep are the scratches? Uh, am I trying to blend it? Am I just working in a, a specific location, which I am? So then I will have to blend it. So it's all that information, all that data that you have to apply to come up with the most appropriate response. So in this situation, this is very appropriate. And it's a way to cut to the chase. So that's what I'm always looking for is how to deliver the results uh, in quicker and easier ways. So I've done my first pass. Now I'm gonna wipe it down real quickly. I'm going to look at it from an angle, check the results, see if I need to do any more polishing. Whoops, welcome to the tight quarters, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I'm back. I've done my initial sanding. I'm going to throw my readers. This is a little trick. If you've seen some of my other videos, what it does is it magnifies the area because I know if I can nail it with the readers, that with the unaided eye, it's going to look flawless. We're talking perfection. So that's what I'm after. So let's go in, let's have a look together and see if we can determine if in fact, yep, there's that rack again that I keep finding with my right hip. So we can see we've got shiny material, shiny up in here. This also was taped off for protection, but we've got this dull satin finish because this is where I've sanded. You can see the line of demarcation here, virgin or untouched, unsanded area. So all down here, this is where I've sanded and it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna turn the camera off so I can really get up close and personal and determine whether I need to sand a little bit more or if I can now proceed into the polishing 
away of the sanding marks. Okay, as was expected, you can see my blue tape is beginning to peel off from the water, which that's what was expected, which is why I do what I do. So I'm going to peel this off. I'm going to replace it with some dry tape because I want protection uh, when I begin to polish. And what I'm protecting in this uh, moment is that original underlying decal. So I'm going to stop filming. I will replace this tape. I will buff a section. I will pull you in so you can check the results yourself. And I can only hope it will uh, translate onto HD. Okay, I've polished this first section here. I've got my new uh, guideline tape set up here so I know I need to polish uh, out to this edge. The tape is holding up well, protecting the underlying decal. Uh, if we look in this direction, it should reveal we have the finely polished area here and then it graduates into the sanded satin area. So I'm going to work uh, from this direction that way for complete polishing. I'll, uh, I'm going to show you because gel coat and clear coat are vastly different animals. Clear coat is on your car. Gel coat is what you will find on boats and RVs. Gel coat, the good news is, it's a very durable, hardy material. It is hard to screw it up. Does that mean it's impossible? No. But in comparison to clear coat, it is vastly different. And that's kind of the good news is if you're a beginning uh, buffer, enthusiast, detail or whatever, working on boats is a good way to kind of, um, you know, cut your teeth. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a good metaphor, but nothing's coming to mind, so it's a good way to practice. So I'm using my uh, rotary buffer. You can see that the pad is beginning to show black because, as I said, the gel coat is molded in that material. They actually put a pigment or a dye or a color into the material itself. Um, it has not been painted over another material. So it's black all the way through. This is white all the way through. <clears throat> Anyhow, so that's why as I'm sanding, like here's a few drip marks, it sh actually shows black. If it was a clear coat and you were sanding, it would not show any color, despite the color underneath the clear coat. Here's some more. So that's just one of the differences. And I use a rotary polisher because clear coat, be be due to the fact that it is so durable, I really want to be able to lay into it with the buffer. Um, so my random orbital would it work? Yes, and that's why I would have to sand that with 2000 or 3000 grit because the orbital has limitations. This DA polisher really uh, is limitless in most ways. The only way it's really limited is because of its size, so that's an issue, but anything, it size is relative, so even that DA polisher over there is still going to be, has its limitations based on size. But as far as the heavy lifting of polishing on gel coats, I'm a DA, or I'm sorry, I'm a rotary fan. And because of these new rotaries that have a super slow start speed um, or setting, like this can, can be tooled down to 600 RPMs, which is ultra low. It's also got a soft start trigger, so I can start it out slowly and speed it up to the speed setting that I've adjusted it to. So I love these new rotary polishers. Um, but for most of you beginners and for 95, let's say, percent of you, a DA buffer is going to be all that you'll ever need. Okay, I want to take you in and um, show you me actually polishing. Uh, there's a couple things I want to highlight. So once again, first is the trade-offs. I love the pad washer. Uh, you've seen it in some of my videos perhaps, but you can see how the pad is getting black from the gel coat. So I use the spur. Now is it as good? What this spur does is it breaks up the fibers, it releases the spent polish, the compound, whatever you want to call it, 
and releases the polish that's now tainted with the gel coat material that I'm buffing off. So that's how I basically clean the pad. Um, let me show you. And I'm not going, you know, when it comes to products, um, the industry is forever trying to sell you more and more products. So they'll have very, what's called um, job specific or industry specific. So for example, this polish, which I'm not gonna show you what it is because you can't get it. It's uh, part of the, what is truly called the commercial industry, uh, boat, shipyards, that kind of stuff. You have auto body industry. So that's truly commercial. Professional is different. That's like professional detailing. That's a little different. So this is a commercial product, but it's it's really kind of irrelevant so long as you find a polish because car polishes, compounds will work on anything so long as it's aggressive enough for what you're trying to accomplish. But people get hung up, especially beginners, they get hung up. It's like, oh, I can't use a car polish on gel coat and I can't use a gel coat polish on, on car paint. Well, the answer is yes and no. It's all based on how aggressive the polish is and that's where experience comes in. So this is labeled as a marine grade polish or compound for marine use. Can I use it on a car? Yes, I could, but I know what I'm doing. Um, it's very aggressive, but there's car polishes that I could also be polishing this, like the Manzerna two products that I talk about in my videos. I could use those on this also and it would be perfectly suitable. It's really, uh, you know, checking it, testing it, uh, checking for results. If you're getting the results you want, then then cool. But this is where experience comes in and you know, I can teach you a lot, but ultimately you're just gonna have to kind of experience certain things on your own. But I wanna show you how much polish I actually use. Now I've done two sections here and I just put a little in the middle like this, doesn't require much. This would be a little more than I would normally use if it was a car. Uh, because it's gel coat, it requires a little more compound. As this spins, this polish will begin to spread out, so I generally center it in the center. You'll see that there's black, as we've explained. Um, also, just like when I sand, I had my marking points, and then I put out the marking points further, so now when I'm polishing, when I'm polished, I overlap the areas to make sure I've complete um, overlap and complete blending of all areas. Okay, a couple things I want to highlight is A, if I feel this, it's barely warm to the touch. Gel coat responds differently than to friction than does clear coat. If this was car paint, it would be vastly hotter. Also, you'll notice if it picked up in the video that at the beginning I had the buffer tilted a little bit so that there was gap here and it's tilted at an angle so I'm using the edge of the buffer to do additional cutting. So I do that initially, once again, based on what, what experience dictates, what the material dictates, and so forth. I take all that information and I apply a strategy. So maybe in some cases, I might tilt the buffer up that, that far from the surface and really lay into that edge. This does not require it, but I want to expedite the process, speed it up, so I'm gonna lift it up a little bit, do my initial cutting, and then to finish it, I'm gonna hold this perfectly flat and then allow the buffer, um, the, the, the machine, the pad, and the polish to do its work and just to finally polish this area flat to remove um, the heavy duty swirl marks. <laughs>
after I'm done polishing with this uh, compound, I am going to uh, go over it with the wool pad and a finished polish. Um, I'm not going to necessarily show you because it'll be the same technique. Um, but because it's finishing and all I'm worried about at that point is not doing any cutting or the removal of any scratches or sanding marks, all I'm doing is finishing, which means I'm finishing it to perfection as far as swirl marks or holograms, you can call it whatever label that you prefer, but that's what the finishing is about. So I won't have to do any tilting or lifting of the pad, I'm just gonna keep it very uh, flat to the surface and allow the buffer and the pad and the polish to do its work. You also notice that the tape is staying in place as I want it to to protect that underlying decal. So you have different types of tape. For most of you, the blue painter's tape will suffice. So I'm gonna finish the polish and finish it up and then I'll pull you back in for the final product. Okay, we have final completion. Let's take a look from the one angle, uh, roughly started here and work back to the length of this gray decal. Look at it from the other, yep, there's that rack I keep bumping into. So I never know what's gonna show up till I get this on my computer. I have looked at this, there is some deep scratches right here but this is where you have to make the trade-off. For example, um, I could sand this away completely, but in order to do that, I'm gonna lose more and more gel coat. So often it comes to, okay, what's the winning combination? You know, is anyone ever going to be able to pick that out? No, they won't. Um, so if you can stand back from normal, traditional viewing distances, and it looks flawless, then to me that's a winning combination. Could I make this completely flawless? Yes, but that's where price comes in. It's like, okay, I've got to charge the customer more. Generally, most customers are gonna want more of their gel coat intact rather than less of it sanded away. And they're okay with some trade-offs because this boat is not flawless overall. There's skid marks, there's bumper scuffs from those bumper buoys, so Yes, this is truly the winning combination. Okay, I did want to show you that this is the uh, Manzerna SF4000 Superior Performance Polish. This is what I finished up the removal of any swirl marks, uh, holograms, call it what you want. And my last, very last step was to finish it with a coat of Manzerna power lock polymer sealant synthetic sealant so that's how i did the finished product okay and uh that should do it okay i just want to speak into the camera because this was a perfect example where i talk about communication is king so i truly believe that if i approach everything with the customer's best interest first over mine that i create a win-win I'm going to ultimately get more business in the future and I just think it's the better way to go. So with that said is this boat represents, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna include this with the first video. I will probably make it a separate video. Um, if you look in the description box, if this in fact is a separate video, you can look at the description box and find, because what I did is I did some uh, wet sanding and polishing on this boat to remove some scratches where the customer had removed a decal. So let's have a look though, because I want to explain something. Because as a mobile detailer, rarely do you have all the information over the phone. So this guy had a decal over here as I showed in the other video. Let me hang up my phone. This red decal. And so I said, well, you can actually remove that and it would be um, even on both sides because what his original thought was that he was gonna have another decal made, custom made, because he's actually in the race business. He makes performance uh, motorcycle hubs and sprockets. It's called uh, W. Um, anyhow, so he was gonna have a custom made decal that would match the other side. So I said, well, why don't you just remove both sides? And that's a simple fix, and now that both sides are even. And he said, well, yeah, okay, I guess that's a thought. Um, and I said, and honestly, think about it. 
who is ever going to be able to see both sides of the boat at the same time? As far as I've checked, I've never come across anyone that has that capacity to see both sides of a car or both sides of the boat at the same time. So unless you are just that aware and that just doesn't exist in real life, no one's going to be that aware where they're going to be like, oh wow dude, your red stripes are missing off of this side of the boat. Now just two seconds ago, I was on this side of the boat and I noticed that you had some red stripes. What happened to the other side? Okay, I'm over dramatizing it f to illustrate the point. It's just never going to happen unless you happen to point it out to someone. So as I started to work, I said, hey, I, well, I offered, I said, I can remove those decals pretty quickly with the eraser tool. Um, so I said, for X amount of money, I can remove it for you rather than the um, strategy that you went with, which wasn't a very good strategy. Or you can just keep it. No one's ever going to notice it. So he came back out and said, yeah, you're right. Valid point, Darren. Who is going to see both sides at the same time? Oh, I know. Nobody. So therefore, let's not overthink it. So at a level, I talk myself out of work. But I'm okay with that. I'm not short on work. And I always want to think with the customer's interest in hand first. Um, in case you're seeing some splatter, I came back here because he pointed out some additional scratches, so I offered to, this is part of over delivering, I offered just to tap it with the buffer and remove some of the abrasions that had happened by him trying to rub it out with rubbing compound. And I haven't finished cleaning up my mess. So the point is, is uh, you know, in many ways I talk myself out of work, but ultimately I feel like it comes back to me anyways. Uh, it's over delivering. I always keep the customer's best interest first. Uh, and really, the golden rule. If it was my boat and my money, would I want someone to be a voice of reason in my world? Yes. And that's where you as a professional detailer, you'll learn how to become a voice of reason. Pull in all the information for a customer because like it's just like the world of detailing we become so fixated on the obvious or what the industry wants us to become fixated on it's like the magician it's like look over here so you can't see what's going on over here because this is where the real magic or the trickery is happening but they want you to see over here so you don't see the trickery so that's what the industry will do is it's like smoke and mirrors or whatever you want to call it is it's like oh it's all about protection what's the ultimate protection but it's not just about one thing and they disregard or they they advertise and configure or represent stuff in isolation but nothing is, exists in isolation so therefore you need to look at all the factors and come to an informed decision and that's what I try to teach you guys is how to do that and if you're a professional detailer it's how do you take in all the information so you can come to the most appropriate and informed decision Okay, till next time.